ICER is trying to do the whole ball of wax. I mean, it's more like the abacus in that it is, it is meant to be focused at policymakers and thought leaders and to have a conversation about value-based pricing as opposed to a decision-making tool. Um, and then I think it is actually trying to do it at two levels. You've got the care value component, which is sort of that individual, it's not individual patient the way we think about it, but it is sort of that what, at what price, you know, to reach a certain you know, benchmark of $100,000 per quality adjusted life year, $150,000 I think are the two benchmarks. What does the price need to be in order to meet that threshold? And then what is the health system value cost? So making some assumptions about cost over a short period of time, it sort of it speculates as to, you know, from a health systems perspective, what should the cost be? And that's kind of the score framework. So it's trying to bite off a lot. Um, and that's, I think, the, the, the that is, I think, a it, it makes sense in some ways because you're really trying to capture a lot of input and try to be thoughtful and systematic and do a thorough cost-benefit analysis of how do you actually, and, and quality of adjusted life years has been a standard, a tried and true way of sort of measuring value over the years. I think the, the problem is if you understand inherently the, the, the limitations of cost-benefit analysis, then you know inherently why there's flaws in trying to do it that way. And, uh, you can identify the upfront high-end costs. You can track those costs over time. You know what those are. Most of the benefits are very difficult to monetize, and you wouldn't even try. Does that going to, I mean, I, I don't know if I stopped a bunch of kids from having children, um, <laughs> but if you actually did a cost-benefit analysis, you probably would, on the end of the day, depending on the discount rate you select, probably it wouldn't make sense to have a child. But because the benefits mean so much to you in ways that you can't monetize, the cost-benefit analysis idea for something like that kind of falls apart. And I think that's part of the limitation inherently of something like healthcare, and you're talking about people's lives. I mean, look at how much effort we will put into saving one life. We can clearly show that we value life at a, at a rate much greater than $100,000 or $150,000 per quality adjusted life year at the individual level. So while I think it may, you got to start somewhere, and I like the idea of trying to gather a bunch of data and have a very academic and somewhat you know, relatively transparent way of doing this to say, all right, we might not have everything we need, but at least we're going to put something together that everybody can take a look and shoot at and say, all right, well, here's what we recommend for a policy for you know, you know, exclusion, you know, exclusion criteria if the price is going to be high. I just think inherently it has, you know, inherently the CBA approach has so many challenges in this space around trying to identify value at the social level and value at the individual level that I don't know how, you, from a patient perspective, I don't know how you get past that.